Welcome back and we're going to look now at another area in which recursion can be very useful to us and that's the area of knowledge and inference. So what we're doing here is we're making logical inferences based on known facts we're inferring new facts. So if you tell me that um, point A is connected directly to point B and point B is directly connected to point C then I can infer that there is a route between points A and C even though you don't have to tell me directly that that is the case. So I'm making inferences. So first of all I'm going to show you how this works, how we use symbolic systems as we call them to represent knowledge about the world and to start with I'm going to start in the Tom and Jerry world. What we're going to do is we are going to have entities in the world, objects, and we're going to have facts about those objects such as the fact that Tom is a cat and that Jerry is a mouse and we're also going to relate objects. We're saying, going to say things like Spike is the father of Tyke, Tom chases Jerry. So those relate to objects. So for a computer using what natural language here, English, that won't work. We're going to have to represent the facts and rules in such a way that our computers can make inferences for us. In other words, we can make inference into a symbolic mathematical process. So the way that we do it is this. We need to encode simple facts like Tom is a cat into a form so that we can manipulate it. So what we actually do is we invent a simple function called a predicate. And this function takes in an object, x, and it will return true if x is a cat and false if it isn't. So for example, we say cat of Tom is true, but cat of Jerry is false. So this is a true fact, cat of Tom, cat of Jerry. The word cat here, think of the set of all cats. That's what this is trying to um, capture here. Similarly, mouse of Jerry is true because Jerry is in the set of mice, but mouse of Tom is false. Now, some facts involve more than one object. I said this to start with. We want, we've got objects, named objects like Tom, Jerry, Spike, Tyke. These are real things. Now, they're, they're actual animals or objects. You can actually pick them up and throw them at a window. Um, so therefore, we can relate these objects using things that we call two-place predicates or sometimes relations. Relations is quite a good term because we're relating two objects. So there's a dog in the Tom and Jerry called, called Spike. He's a bulldog and he's got a little son called Tyke and Spike is the father of Tyke and that's true. Whereas father Tom Jerry is false. So we've now invented one place predicates basically to put things into sets and we've invented two place predicates so we can relate objects. So let's see how we can manipulate our facts now. What we're going to do is we'll keep a database containing the symbolic versions of true facts. So cat of Tom is true, we stick it in the database. Cat of Butch is true. We stick that in the database. Mouse of Jerry is true. Dog of Spike, Dog of Tyke, and Father of Spike, Tyke. Now everything else, like Cat of Jerry, we don't need to make a list of false facts because everything that is not in the database is assumed to be false. That's quite good. Here I've got one, two, three, four. There's five objects here. And there's three sets, so I would have to list basically another 10 facts about these objects, if I've got my arithmetic right. But I don't need to list those. I don't need to list the false facts. I don't need to say um, 
cat of Jerry is false, cat of Spike is false, uh, cat of Tyke is false. Um, I can just assume that they're not there. So that, that basically keeps my uh, database nice and tight. And in particular, with this relation, father, Spike, Tyke, well, if I had to list all the false versions, like it is false that Tom is the father of Butch, I'd end up with 20, well, 24 false facts that I'd have to um, represent here, which would be, um, it is false that Tom is the father of Butch, it's Tom that false that uh, Tom is the father of Jerry, and so on. So only keeping note of the true facts about the world is really good. And this is what's called my database. So I can now store facts about the world. That's good. Now, the thing is that given the facts in the world, I'm allowed to infer new facts. Inference is where you you find a fact that's not in the database using a rule. And these rules are kept in a separate part of the database. So for example, say we, were, we had a rule that said all mice are small. So here's the set of small things, small x. And what we say here is if x is a mouse, then x is small. If we're in our world, all cats chase mice, which is certainly too true in Tom and Jerry, if you've ever watched it, then we would say, if X is a cat and Y is a mouse, then it is true that X chases Y. So I didn't have to store in my database any facts about Tom chasing Jerry or um, Butch chasing Jerry. We can just infer it using this rule here. Okay, and when you see a comma in one of these rules, read that as and. So if X is a cat and Y is a mouse, then X chases Y. Notice that only objects, real objects, go inside the brackets. Set names and relations, they go outside the brackets. We'll see more about that later. How do we derive facts? Well, the way that we derive facts is that we use the rules just like we did in MIU. We basically have a list of supporting facts here. So here is the supporting fact, mouse Jerry. We match that with mouse X here. And we say, okay, that matches if X is equal to Jerry. Well, X here is a variable. It's allowed to match against any object. So therefore this does match with that, and therefore we can infer that small Jerry substituting in the variable here. So we can also apply the second rule here, X and Y match to Tom here, and also to Y matches to Jerry because Jerry is a mouse. So because we can match those, we can infer that chases Tom Tom Jerry. So in other words, Tom chases Jerry by using that rule there. Okay, the way that derivations are best laid out, um, you don't have to do it like this, but I think this, this makes a, a lot of sense. And uh, certainly if you lay it out in this way, I'll be able to mark it um, nicely, is that we write the rule to be applied, the facts to be used, the variable values and the new fact. So let me give you an example of this. Say I want to derive chases Tom Jerry. So that's the fact that Tom, the cat, chases Jerry the mouse. Let's see how we derive that. First of all, we write down the, um, the rule that we're going to apply. Cat X and mouse Y implies chases XY. We then write down the supporting facts from our database or ones that we've already derived. You'll see this later. So we write down cat of Tom, mouse of Jerry, because that supports this side of the rule. And the variable values are what we have to let the X and Y be so that it matches the facts. So if X is Tom and Y is Jerry, then these supporting facts match this side of the rule. Once we've got our, they're called bindings. Once we've got our bindings for the variables, 
then we simply substitute the bindings into the right hand side of the rule here. So we have derived the fact that Tom chases Jerry. So knowledge engineering is how we take the real world and we represent it inside the computer. So the process of taking these known facts about the world and turning it into facts and taking facts about the world, Tom is a cat, Jerry is a mouse, uh, Butch is, is a cat, that's called knowledge engineering. And I'd like to show you a simple approach for doing this, and then we're gonna try and exercise. First of all, identify all the actual objects in your world, things that you can pick up or trip over. So, um, so in, in my world here, I have an iPhone. That's an actual object. It's something that I can pick up. So I need to give this object a name. I could call it iPhone number one or something. Or it may be that your object actually has a name because it's an animal or a person. But anyway, all the objects in your world, give them names. Pen 33, for example. Identify all the sets that those can belong to, such as the set of all cats, the set of all mice, the set of all iPhones, and the set of all pens. Next, identify possible relationships between objects, things that relate to objects. So if my iPhone is here and my pen can be on top of it, then there's a relationship that says that the, iPhone, that the pen is on top of the iPhone, on top of pen number three, iPhone number one, for example. So you're relating objects. Point A is directly connected to point B. That's a relation. You need to translate your rules then into logic. And this is a little um, exercise for you. So I'll, I'll pause here to let you have a go at it. So pause the video and try to translate each of these rules into a piece of logic, like the, the rules that I showed you. Every dog likes Spike. What would that look like? Dogs chase cats. A cat is an animal and Fat people are jolly. So try and translate those into logic for me. Pause the video now and do that. So here's the answers. Every dog likes Spike. If X is a dog, then X likes Spike. You don't have to say that Spike is a dog. It doesn't matter that he's not actually specified that he's a dog here. So. Um, if X is a dog, X likes Spike. That's all the sentence said. Dogs chase cats. Well, this what this actually means is all dogs chase all cats. Or you could say every dog chases every cat. So in other words, if X is a dog and Y is a cat, then X chases Y. Notice that the objects and the things represented by objects, the variables, they're the things inside the brackets. A cat is an animal. Basically, it says if X is, is a member of the set of cats, then X is a member of the set of animals. So you could draw a Venn diagram for this one where you've got the set of cats and the set of animals. But in terms of logic, it says if X is a cat, then X is an animal. So we're reading this arrow as then. And then finally, fat people are jolly. Well, you could have a set which has got fat people in it. But what I did here was that I actually intersected two sets. I said, if X is fat, so this is the set of all fat things. That includes Garfield, for example, who's a fat cat. And this is the set of all persons. So that's got all, all people in it, including the thin ones. Then the intersection of those, that's the set of fat people. So if X is fat and X is a person, then X is jolly. So... Here's a knowledge engineering exercise for you. We've got some sentences here. Ford is an alien, Arthur is a human, and Marvin is an android. Humans are life forms, aliens are life forms, and androids are cleverer than life forms. And what I want you to do is to use the knowledge engineering approach to write that down as a set of 
facts and rules and then use that to derive the fact that Marvin is cleverer than Arthur. So have a go at that exercise and I'll see you in the next video.